Hello and welcome to Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul. My co-host Justin Baker and I coming at you with the expansion draft extravaganza here at Overtime Hockey Talk. And we are going to just jump right in to our mock expansion draft. We're just going to, you know, Justin and I both have our lists of the players that we think will be taken in this draft. We'll talk about uh, maybe some dis- differing opinions, how the Seattle Kraken are likely to build their team, and maybe some potential moves along the way. Justin, welcome. Oh, hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me for the 226th time, I think is what we're at now. Just also, beautiful. Also, if you hear, you know, if you hear a little baby, uh, it's because my child is in this room right now. My wife went to the gym, you know, a little a little later than she should have. So uh, now I'm, you know, gave her a nice plate full of puffs, and she's chowing away. But every now and then, she'll let me know how much she enjoys those puffs. I mean, she's going to let you know if she doesn't like your pick. I'm sure she'll. Uh, That's true. She'll say something. That's true. She knows way more than I do. That's saying something. <laughs> um, okay, so as we jump into the expansion draft, just before we we start making our picks, how did you? How do you see the Seattle Kraken building this team based on the players that are going to be available? Yeah, you know, I think they're going to target a few things. Um, personally, I think one of their big, you know, moves is going to be uh, trying to acquire assets that I feel like they can move off at some point this season. I feel like uh, the Kraken are going to have to go about acquiring assets. And, you know, what I mean by assets is draft picks a little bit differently than the Golden Knights did. The Knights obviously got lucky and a lot of teams were willing to, you know, uh, get rid of second, third, first round picks for, you know, Vegas to, to take, you know, take player A over player B and so on and so forth. I mean, we saw with, you know, uh, I mean, obviously William Carlson got thrown in on Columbus's deal and it turned out pretty good for Vegas. And, um, you know, obviously teams have learned their lessons this time. And so have they we're gonna definitely. Well, I mean, so some teams have learned the lessons. Let's just put it that way. Already hearing uh, about teams that are, you know, well, they don't want to give up this guy, so they're planning on making moves. Like, I, as far as I know, I don't know. The, the one thing I think that could be different is that teams will be more likely to trade draft picks, but maybe not players as sure. often. I, I, but what I do think is I don't think they're going to pay as big a price, right? I think, obviously... Vegas took advantage of some teams and uh, but on the flip side too right like you talked about uh, you know with teams maybe willing or wanting to move players uh, the big thing that's going to affect that is the fact that we're still going into a flat salary cap year and so some teams on a budget might look at this and be like okay crap well we got to do something if we want to be competitive next year and this is the opportunity so you know personally I don't see a lot of moves happening I mean on my mock draft I think I only have about three trades that uh that are happening here so um you know i don't know if you put anything down but we'll see what happens and you know hey if there's more than three that'd be great because i i certainly love the excitement that goes along with a trade to see what happens for sure to be honest i didn't do a whole lot with trades i kind of looked at this and you know some of the players that i picked i assume that there may be a deal surrounding it like uh for example i think there's a chance that they will take uh, Ryan Johansson from Nashville. I think that if that were to happen, they would need to likely pay a price to have them take him. Sure. Uh, along with, you know, or I've seen, I've seen other people's lists include Matt Duchesne as the player that they take, which would definitely need to have some kind of of, of draft pick attached to it. Likely a first round pick. I mean, you think about what the Leafs had to pay just to give up Patrick Marlowe's one year left on his salary at like 6 million. And uh, Matt Duchesne's got a few years after that for a higher cap hit. So uh, I don't know all what they'd have to give up to get Seattle to take one of those guys. I think it'd be an easier pill to swallow with Johansson because his deal isn't as long, but at the same time, do you look at Duchesne and say, you know, we actually could revitalize this guy, whereas maybe Ryan Johansson's a little, a little too old. 
Yeah, well, I think regardless, the one thing to keep in mind is uh, uh, Ron Francis has gotten permission from Seattle's ownership to uh, go spend to the cap to the, you know, the top. So that that might signal some trades coming to to pick up some salary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and and can they go out and see the way that I'd play this is if I can spend to the cap, I'm spending to the cap. I will take on players who have an inflated salary. I want assets as well in return if I'm going to take those, but I'm only going to take guys who I think can actually play. I'm not taking like a, I, I think that I uh, didn't Vegas take David Clarkson from Columbus. Yes. I, I think they, they did that to, you know, to, to take that uh, dollar amount away. I wouldn't do that. I would only take guys who I can actually put onto the ice. Uh, so that, that definitely plays a, a little bit of a factor into the team that I picked. Uh, I say we jump in. Let's do it. Uh, shall we do this just in like an alphabetical order? Kind of uh, like we'll start with Anaheim and, and move on through, or do you have yours in a different type of way? Do you have yours by mm. position? Nope. I want, uh, you know, alphabetical. So Beautiful. Look at that. Through. We didn't actually talk about that. Probably <laughs> should have, but we didn't. And it ends up working out. Okay. Well, let's start with the Anaheim Ducks. Who do you yes. have going from the Ducks? Yeah. So first off, let me just, I'm going to tease you a little bit. Uh, as far as my team goes, I've got 16 forwards, 10 defensemen, four goalies, and I'm spending $74.1 million against the cap. So, uh, with that said, the first player I have going from the Anaheim Mighty Ducks is Alexander Volkov. Okay. 23 year old winger. Off. He's an RFA for this year, so he'll need a new contract. But looking at, you know, the players they have available, I just honestly, I like the youth there. I like the potential that he, that he brings. And so, you know, maybe, you know, uh, Seattle takes a chance and, you know, hope that he blossoms into something good. Yeah. I went with the, uh, like a Volkov. He's he's all right. Like yeah, you know he's he's done well in the AHL. Hasn't done a whole, done anything in the NHL of of you know yet. Uh, certainly could be a, a diamond in the rough. I you know the way that Adam Henrique played at the World Championships. I just I, I know that he's making a lot. I think may, there's a chance that Anaheim might be willing to uh, to toss something. Seattle's way to take him because of his contract, uh, but I see Adam Henrique going to Seattle and and being a real nice piece. You look at what Tampa Bay had to do to win the Cup; they needed that third line, and and I know we're talking about an expansion team here, uh, but Adam Henrique can play up in your lineup, but he can slot into a third line. He can play center. He could also play on that second line, and he will do all the things, all the things that you need. Uh, from a guy like Adam Henrique. Yes, he will make $5.8 million for another three years, which will put him at 34. But I think that you can probably, you know, you can work around that. Maybe there's just a deal to be had with Anaheim. Like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll toss in some other player. I just, I think that they're going to want to hold on to Volkov because of his potential. They're going to leave Henrique exposed and to me, that's, you know, I guess the the only other in in my list, the only other player that they could take uh, or that they, they might not expose would be like a Sonny Milano. But I, I don't think you're you don't want a Sonny Milano. You want somebody who can make an impact. And I think that that's Adam Henrique. You need some leaders in that locker room. He would be one. And after his world championship. Uh, he led that team Canada to a gold and was phenomenal. So, yeah, I don't hate that pick because I mean, let me just tell you, I think there's going to be uh, a few top name centers available as far as the expansion draft goes. And so, uh, centers are at a premium at free agency as well. So, you know, that's it exactly, be, yeah, that's exactly wouldn't be it. bad for them to listen. You've, yep. you've got a center that he can play, like he could score you 20 goals still. I, I think yep. that he's, he's still capable. And you know what? You, know, you take a guy who's a little bit older. You, are you willing to deal with what you got to deal with in three years when maybe he's not as good and you maybe have to, you know, get creative? But also the salary cap will go up. It's likely the salary cap will will increase significantly. I think uh, yes. once once we're kind of out of all this crap. So uh, 
Okay, there's our there's our Anaheim picks. Who do you have going from the Arizona Coyotes? I feel like there's only one player to go. So uh, <laughs> you tell me who you have. Yeah, first goalie off the board, Aiden yeah, Hill. Yeah, that's that's exactly who I have as well. I I don't see a player on this team that I even want. The only thing that I could potentially see is you know like a a Phil Kessel trade. Uh, which he'd obviously have to agree to. But I could see Phil Kessel being open to being traded if they really, for some reason, don't want to lose Aiden Hill and they know they're going to trade Kessel anyways. Maybe they can work out something where you know, they they just take a UFA and they get Kessel. And uh, I would think that Seattle would actually have to give Arizona an asset back in order to get access to Kessel if he was willing to go there. So yeah. it, it, there, there could be some interesting, you know, and, and Phil Kessel right away, there's your face of your franchise. And the more I thought about that, that I think that would be very appealing for a team like Seattle, all the assets you're going to get by squeezing teams to take one of those and flip it for Kessel. That wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. I mean, if it doesn't cost you maybe, you know, maybe just a third rounder. On top of it, I would be all all aboard for that one. You wouldn't be willing to give a second round pick for Phil Kessel. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. A second round pick, really, for a guy who yeah. scored twenty goals in fifty six games. He basically scored. He he would have been on pace for a thirty goal year, uh, probably close to almost sixty points on a team that yeah. could not score. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> So I guess maybe the thought process, thinking, okay, if I give up the second round pick, him being a UFA next year, you could flip him at the deadline and then get that back. So maybe then, and then, hey, maybe well, you probably out get a and, first round pick for Phil Kessel, my guess, right? And maybe yeah. it works out, and he does very, very well. And like you say, you get a first rounder or more, or you re-sign him, and you know everything's jolly for the next couple of years. But uh, yeah, I guess at, at that point, I, I might be willing to give up a second rounder then. I feel like that'd be kind of fun, Phil Kessel to the to the Seattle Kraken. All right. Well, that's, uh, I mean, and, and if we're going safe, I'm saying Aiden Hill as well. Yes. Uh, he's the only player actually unprotected. Phil Kessel can't be unprotected because he is a no move class. All right. The Boston Bruins. Who do you have from uh, the Boston, from the bees? All right. I got forward Nick Ritchie going to the Seattle Kraken here. RFA. Okay. 25 year old winger. I think uh, this is a kid who, you know, obviously I think, you know, had a lot of potential, just really hasn't worked out uh, between Anaheim and, and here. And so I think maybe, you know, Seattle's willing to take a chance. And, you know, again, with a lot of a lot of the youth, I, I feel like, you know, Seattle's going to take a lot of younger guys on RFA contracts or, you know, with still deals in place and really, you know, try to hope to revive some careers or at least get them jump started. Right. Because, um, you know, he had some flashes in Anaheim, looked pretty decent. Last year wasn't too bad in Boston, 26 points in 56 games. But I think with the emergence of Krejci and Hall potentially being re-signed, I think you know Boston's more than willing to part with a guy like Richie to you know to keep that duo around as far as money's concerned. Okay, I went a different route. I went Trent Frederick, who was a first round pick, went uh, 29th overall of the Bruins, and I, I think it was in 2016 or 2015, one of the two. 2015, yep. 2015. Where they had three draft picks in a row yes, in the first round. Yes, and he was one of them. He hasn't panned out exactly the way that uh, that potentially you would hope. Obviously, like this last year, he, he only had four goals. Um, I'm looking at someone who is a, you know, a first-round pick and obviously has some talent, and uh, I think that he – Maybe given a new situation, more a different opportunity because most nights he was getting nine, ten minutes a game. He's, uh, you know, kind of playing more of a shutdown role. So I think maybe he's somebody who you could look at and go, "Hey, we can get this a guy who was taken in the first round, still is only twenty three years old, and potentially, you know, if you you see something in his game that you like, he's somebody that I I think I I would rather take." some of these projects which i think they will they'll 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 go after some guys that maybe aren't uh aren't because they want to find that diamond in the rough right like you want to find your william carlson's you want to find your jonathan marcia so and i know that a hey, marcia so had more success uh than a frederick but uh you you get my gist that you you sure. maybe go after the guys who uh just have fallen short of their potential and maybe you think you can 
change that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going Trent Frederick. Beautiful. Another center as well, uh, which which I, I put a premium on. Uh, let's go Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, for me, I've got the first ever player to be chosen by two different expansion teams, and that's Colin Miller okay. on defense. Is it the first ever player? I, I feel like he Did would be. Did you go I back mean, I, to like the 80s <laughs> and the 90s when there was a ton of those? Yeah, I probably should have. But honestly, if anybody out there knows the answer to that, please let us know. There you go. Uh, yeah, but for me, Colin Miller, I just I think he's still got a lot of potential to be a good middle-pairing defenseman, not to mention he has a right-handed shot, which is definitely a premium. And not only that, but he's you know on his last year of his deal. And so you know if, for whatever reason, it's just not a good fit, you know, Seattle decides they don't want to – uh, you know, re-sign him beyond the season. I think he's still a valuable asset at the deadline that I think teams will be willing to pay for. Yeah, it's too bad that they have to protect Jeff Skinner. Um, that's a that's a tier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. In the protected list for the Sabers, uh, I guess you're protecting Yokoharu, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and that that would expose Colin Miller, obviously. Um, my pick was I actually went with Rasmus Asplund. Uh, he scored seven goals last year in twenty eight games. It's a twenty goal pace. And so if I my, my thought was just maybe there's you know they see a guy who can score goals, he's available, and Seattle says let's let's go after a guy who has shown that he can score. Uh, Colin Miller, we know what he is. You could probably get him cheap too if you if you just wanted to make a move, and uh, and the Sabers, you know, they would love probably to get that money off their deal. Uh, it just depends on what other defenseman you happen to take the rest of the draft. Uh, but I like a guy who has scored some goals, and may, maybe you can, you know, there's your William Carlson potentially, a guy that you can kind of. You see that he was able to score goals, just not given the opportunity, playing on the fourth line, and you give him the right opportunity, put him with the right players, and suddenly he scores you 30 goals. And that's what they're looking for. And I think Asplund potentially has that. I love it. And for, I mean, centers, you know, again, <laughs> you're, you're picking them. I love it. Yeah, I mean, and those are the guys that you likely could flip. You know, right. teams teams can never have too many centers. And Frankly, you can always move a center to the wing. It's you can't move as easily a winger to a, to the center position. It's just yep, not won't as, disagree. Not as easy. Okay, let's go Calgary Flames. This is one of those teams uh, where there there could be some significant drama surrounding what's going to happen in Calgary. Uh, who do you have going from the Flames? Yeah, I mean, you talked about a drama, right? I think this offseason we're already hearing names like Johnny Goudreau. Sean Monahan potentially being moved. And so I think this team is due for a facelift, uh, you know, to see, a, you know, a brand new sort of team next season, right? I, I'm hoping that they re, they do a lot of moves. This would just, you know, be right up my alley. But for me, I think Seattle's going to pick Mark Giordano. I think they're going to take that $6.7 bucks off the books. I, I don't think Calgary protects him in the draft. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to protect Tanev, Anderson, and, and Noah Hannafin and leave Giordano exposed. And I think, again, with – Seattle, primarily in my opinion, taking a lot of younger players are going to be looking for a couple of veteran guys to be those leaders in the locker room Why they sort of develop this team over the next couple seasons. And for me, Giordano is one of those guys. In my mind, you can't. If, if Giordano is left unprotected, you can't not take him. Right. Like, you are a moron if you don't take Mark Giordano <laughs> if he's available. I mean, he won, the, he won the Norris Trophy two years ago, two seasons ago. Uh, or maybe is it three now? Three, right? Yeah, three. three seasons ago. He's still effective. He's 37. Yes, he's a UFA. It's likely you can at least get a second round pick for him at the deadline if things aren't going well. And, and even if he's having a bad season, you're still getting a third round pick for him. Yeah. And, and he's not going to have a bad season. He's going to be effective for you. You know he'll put up 40, 50 points if if given the, the right power play opportunities. I think that it's a no-brainer to uh, to pluck Mark Giordano. And for the Flames, you know, I the only thing that I can think of is that they go, you know, there's just no, 
There's not many players that you don't want to protect. Maybe the only way that this doesn't happen is if the Flames, this is what the Flames would have to do. They have to trade, or they have to, to get rid of Milan Lucic, who has two years left on his deal. They have to find somebody who's willing to take him. And and then they have to expose, what, Mangiopan? And yeah, then, maybe. And then they can, uh, and then I think they could do it. Well, three defensemen, yeah, seven forwards, or eight total, right? Yeah, so uh, no, you'd still have to leave them exposed. Man, you'd have to... They would probably end up taking Lindholm or, like, the, yeah, there's there's really no other option. Like, the, even when you play around with it, like, it, they're going to have to make a trade if they don't want to lose Mark Giordano. Yeah, I agree. Or they risk losing Tanev, which you don't want to do. Uh, although Tanev would, uh, you know, Tanev played okay um maybe instead you you expose tanev and you let them take chris tanev and you just call it good on what what he was and what he did they didn't make the playoffs with him and you if you want to keep mark giordano beyond this year you know maybe that's what you do i just don't see i don't see that happening it's weird though to think that giordano could be leaving the flames this way Right. He's kind of the James Neal of this of this expansion. Oh, no, he's the Mark Andre Fleury, in my opinion, right? I, mean, uh, I don't know he's, because he's the guy a, a potential face of the franchise type player, and yeah, you but, say goodbye. But Mark Andre Fleury wasn't a free agent at the end of the year, was he? He wasn't. No, he I, wasn't a UFA. You know, no, I, he still had term on his deal. But uh, similar though, it's it's a leader, right? It's one of your your top guys that you're just looking to you know make a change and. You're saying thanks, but see you later. Yeah, all right. I'll bite. <laughs> but <laughs> if he's exposed, he's gone. No doubt. Yes. No doubt. Uh, let's go Carolina Hurricanes. All right. I've got uh, another defenseman going and another big name, and that's Brady Shea. Yeah. I, I've i messed around with the Hurricanes uh, a good amount, and I can't find a way not to, <laughs> not to have Brady Shea exposed – uh, so yeah, I mean, the only other guy that you could potentially take would be Nino Niederreiter, which I think they would be, I think they would expose Niederreiter. Um, but with him being a UFA at the end of the year, it makes a lot of sense to take Brady Shea, maybe your best defenseman that you can get outside of Mark Giordano. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do not disagree with that. I think, cause the problem is, I mean, you've got Brett Pesci, Slavin, you're obviously going to protect and you have to protect some youth and Jake Bean because I, I feel like he's still an asset to this team. And, you know, between Gardner and, and Brady Shea and the amount of forwards that, you know, Carolina has that obviously they're going to want to protect. I, I just think, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta leave one of those guys exposed and it's going to be unfortunately, um, you know, Brady Shea. So see you later. Thanks for yeah. coming from New York, I, but we'll see you. I mean, the, the other side of this is they could go out, and make a move and make a deal sure. with, with Seattle, uh, which, you know, in, in which case you could maybe say, Hey, we'll give you Jake Gardner, which not a bad, not a bad flip either. Um, what about Jake Gardner and Nino Niederreiter? If that was the deal, like, Hey, we'll let you take both of them. Uh, now, you know, I feel is it like worth it to you, to, could... you to, to keep Shea and give up those two guys? I feel like if you want to throw in a name, you know, maybe throwing a, a Warren Fogle, right? Yeah, but I they could like just they could just not ex- they they could just unprotect Warren Fogle, right? And, or maybe uh, a Morgan Geeky, right? You leave him exposed, or you 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 throw him in the package there, and you say, hey, let's you know let's throw him in there. Because well, I think he'll be on he'll be unexposed anyways. Likely, I think between him and Fogle, it'll be one of the two guys will be left in the forward group. But I think uh, I saw one uh, one mock draft where Shvetsnikov. Oh. Or maybe it was Jake Gardner was dealt to the the wings for uh, for Evgeny Shvetsnikov, okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so then they they had that that was some I you know looked at tons of mock drafts too before this but yeah it's and again it's going to depend on how if they expose Brady Shea he's gone unless they're willing to to toss picks their way. Yeah, and you got a, a guy who's you know been in a, a top two spot before and at five point two million dollars. I mean, if he can recapture some of that New York magic, it's you know it's worth it. 
Yeah, yeah, and three years left on the deal, so that so he's cost controlled too. Uh, yep. Okay, let's go the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, I I feel like there's not a whole lot here with the Blackhawks. Uh, I went with the defensive side because I I think that you know we you can flip these guys. I went with uh, Calvin DeHaan. Okay, yeah, I I went defense too, but I took a a younger guy that they're going to unfortunately leave exposed, and that's a Riley Stillman. Uh, oh, okay. See, I have them. I actually have them uh, protecting Riley Stillman. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate that move at all. And I was torn between Calvin DeHaan and Riley Stillman as far as who they would protect. And, see, and I, and I uh, think you, you're, they're going to protect Riley Stillman, uh, twenty three year old over the thirty year old, uh, who's yeah. a UFA. You know, the other thing to consider is too. I mean, I, we talked about it earlier, but you know, obviously Caleb Jones for Duncan Keith. Uh, you know that trade happening now. Caleb Jones, you have to either leave him, you know, exposed, or you have to protect him. And so, you know, where does Chicago value a guy like Caleb Jones? Do they think he's worth protecting over a guy like Riley Stillman or Calvin DeHaan at this point? That's that. That is also true. Um, I have Caleb Jones protected. So I have Zadora, yeah. Jones, and Stillman protected. I have Murphy and Dahan unprotected on the defensive side. Okay. Yeah, I left Connor Murphy protected, but Stillman and Dahan exposed. Okay. Yeah. See, I would think if if I'm Chicago, I'm going. All right. They can only take one, and both these guys, Murphy and Dahan, are free agents. So we'll lose the free agent over all these guys that are RFAs. So. I think it's likely that they'll expose the guys who are UFAs at the end of the year, uh, but we'll see. That's fair. We'll see what they do. Okay, let's go uh, Colorado Avalanche. This one's fun. A lot of good players yeah. that are uh, that are sitting there. Who do you have going? And they don't have to protect Landis Cog. That's a, that's a nice perk. No Landis Cog, no Brendan Saad, who I, I don't think will be back, but... Uh, nevertheless, they don't have to protect Gabriel Landis Cog unless they are funny and sign him before the expansion draft. I don't see that <laughs> happening. Uh, but who do you have going from Colorado? Yeah, this one was, I mean, this one was pretty tough. There wasn't as far as, you know, guys to leave exposed. There was really only one guy at the forward group, and that's JT Comfer, right? And then you can look on the back end and say that there's some defensemen here. And, um, Honestly, I, I think, you know, between when you look at the defense, right, Eric Johnson has to be protected. Then you got Samuel Gerard and Kale McCarr. So to me, that leaves both Ryan Graves and, and Devin Taves exposed. And I think between the two of those guys, I'm taking Devin Taves all day long. Yeah. So I actually have Colorado protecting, they have to protect Eric Johnson, Samuel Gerard, Devin Taves, Ryan Graves, and Kale McCarr. I have them protecting those five defensemen. So the, the only forwards that I have them protecting, I have them protecting Miko Rantanen, Nathan McKinnon, and Tyson Jost. Okay. Uh, I think that they're going to leave Nazem Kadri exposed. And they're going to dangle that carrot. And Nazem Kadri is a free agent at the end of next year. Jonas Donskoy is a free agent in two years. And I think that they might dangle those carrots and say, go ahead and take them because Seattle might just sneak up a Nazem Kadri who would likely become their number one center. I know he's a UFA at the end of the year. I know he's had some issues getting suspended in the playoffs, but the goal is to get to the playoffs. And with Kadri, you have a good chance to get into the playoffs. He, he's, he is probably the only legitimate player who could play a number one center position for Seattle outside of, of course, a, you know, a, making a crazy acquisition. But in terms of this expansion draft, uh, it's either him or, you know, maybe, uh, what Nashville can give, but I'll take Nazem Kadri over Ryan Johansson any day. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't disagree with you at all right now. Yep. And I got to think that maybe Colorado's looking at him and going, dude, you cost us. Just like the Leafs. Dude, you cost us. <laughs> and and maybe Seattle doesn't care because all they care about is getting to the playoffs right now. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. That's a tough one. If they left him exposed, would you take Nazem Kadri if you're Seattle? Um Yeah, probably I mean, well, so if they don't go and protect a massive amount of defensemen, right? If Devin T- if Taves is still there for me, I I obviously want him over Kadri, but um 
you know, at this point, yeah, if, if you know, Taves is protective and Kadri's available, sure, because he's still a potential 30 goal scorer, right? I mean, he's just a couple seasons removed from that, so he definitely has the potential to still score some goals. And who knows, he might be your William Carlson, the guy that just magically puts up 40 goals if he's the, the number one guy on that team. Hey, I mean, he's put up 30 before. I mean, yeah. he puts up 20 almost every year, so... Uh, I I think he has put up 20 every year outside of these potentially shortened seasons, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm going out some Kadri. I I think that would be uh that would be a great movie. Yeah, I guess he had a, he had only 11 goals this last year in 56 games, but uh, so not quite on the on the 20 goal pace or maybe right around 20 goals. But uh, he really struggled early on with Colorado and his shooting percentage was the lowest it's ever been in his t- entire career since his rookie year with the Leafs. Wow. So you you got you can look at that and probably go, I mean, the year before that, he was shot 14.3%. This last year, 65 So he wasn't even at league average. Uh, something was going on. Uh, he, you know, yeah. I, I think that he can he can move somewhere else and, and find what he needs. And and that would be, I think it'd be, it'd be fun to see. You you always, you know, I want to see this team be good. I want to see the crack and be a decent team. And I think with Kadri, they could be Uh, okay. Let's keep on rolling. Let's go. The Columbus blue jackets. Okay. For me, I've got a left winger by the name of Eric Robinson. Um, I have Eric Robinson as well. Yeah. I think that, you know, just based, I mean, honestly, there's not a lot of uh, good options here. Uh, if, you know, if I'm looking at this team, obviously, you know, they're, they're going to protect Jones who they're likely going to trade at some point, Wierenski, uh, Gorinkoff. And then of course, you know, you've got on the forward group, Atkinson, Nyquist, Domi, Line, Boone Jenner, Bjorkstrand and Jack Roslovic. So really that's just possible donation. There's really not a whole other, a whole other, lot of good pieces to take. So, I, I mean, I guess the other, the other thing that could happen is they don't protect Nyquist who didn't play at all last year. And they protect Eric Robinson because, uh, you know, they they think that he can be decent. And maybe, I, I think that they would be happy to get rid of Gus Nyquist. Uh, I, I think that, you know, they, they could move on from him. He would be a good piece in Seattle. He, you know, he's, he still probably can do something for them. Uh, and maybe Columbus is willing to, I don't know, eat some of the salary or what have you if... Maybe Eric Robinson goes along with Gus Nyquist, and uh, and you make that a part of the deal, and then they, you know, they're not as cash strapped, uh, and they can more easily sign Zach Wierenski and and do everything that they need to do to keep him. And knowing you're going to trade Seth Jones, you're going to probably bring in some other talent, and that's going to cost money as well. So it could be to their benefit to get Gus Nyquist out of there. And if you're Seattle, you know he's a proven talent. He's only 31. He could still probably put up 35, 40 points in uh, the right situation. So he may be worth having. Yeah, I agree. He's still he's still a valuable player. Okay, let's go Dallas Stars. Who do you have from the Stars? All right, this one's going to be interesting to me because I think there's a couple things that are going to happen here. I think, one, we're going to see uh, an actual UFA get uh, taken here. And I say that because um, I feel like Dallas is going to package um, package some, some picks here to get, you know, uh, Anton Kudobin protected. Um, I know the obvious pick for a lot of people is to take Doobie here, but I think Dallas is going to get creative and find a way to keep him because – uh, ben Bishop with the the injury history there, I don't think he's going to be uh, effective. And unfortunately, he's got a no movement clause. He's probably not going to wave for them. And, uh, you know, you've got that that rookie goaltender there that I, I don't think they're going to, you know, Ott- Ottinger. I don't think they're going to rely on him to be the number one guy. So uh, Alessiak, I think Jamie Alessiak is going to be the guy that ultimately gets chosen and, uh, you know, gets some picks that go back the other way. Now he might decide not to resign in Seattle and might end up right back in Dallas. So who knows? Yeah, I think if I'm Seattle, uh, I am not going to help Dallas out because I don't think that Dallas <laughs> can pay me enough to not take Hudobin. Now, if, if Ben Bishop is willing to waive his no move uh, to go to Seattle, I would probably consider him. Uh, I think that he is probably the more talented goalie, and if he's healthy, you know, and you can give him some other goaltenders around him where again, he gets to play 41 games. 
Uh, I like my chances come playoff time, but yeah, he is really always hurt. It's hard. To, it's hard to want to take Ben Bishop. Uh, but I mean, they, they could, they could put together a really nice package. Uh, but in my mind, I think I'm just taking, he's my number one goalie. Dallas is gifting me a number one goalie. Yeah. I've got a couple other goaltenders that, um, I think Dallas or that Seattle is going to take that. I think they probably have in mind to be their number one. And I think they'll pass on, uh, you know, an older goaltender in Kudobin who looked fine last year, but, uh, not quite his, you know, playoff Stanley cup run form per se. Yeah. But can you like, uh, at the same time, this last year was weird for a lot of people, especially the Dallas stars. They had such a weird start to sure. their year. Um, I'm willing to, to say he gets a pass. Um, also, yes, he's 33 years old, but he wasn't a starter. Like he, he hasn't played the bulk of games that some guys who have been a starter since they were 25 will have played up to this point. Like a 33 year old Frederick Anderson would be a much different, have a much different wear and tear in his body than a 33 year old Anton Kido. But um, sure. so no, understandable uh, in my mind, I'm, I'm taking Kido, I, I, I do have other goaltenders that I think could potentially compete for a top spot, but I think that he's probably the most likely best goaltender that, that you can get. So let's, let's keep it moving though. Let's go uh, Detroit Red Wings. Who do you think's coming in from your team? Yeah. You know, I, I thought about this one and there's, there's really not a lot to be excited about if you're uh, if you're Seattle, as far as what you can pick and what uh, Detroit's going to, Protect. Uh, I know a lot of mock drafts I looked at had Evgeny Sveshnikov, you know, being taken, but uh, most people don't realize, and at least I'm going off cap friendly, so excuse me if I'm getting it wrong, but he is six games short required to meet the exposure requirements, so he can't be taken as far as I'm uh, concerned. So for me, I think, uh, I think honestly, another UFA is going to get chosen, and Detroit doesn't pay a single thing. I think that, um, you know, they look at the center position and look at Luke Glendening, the best face-off guy in the NHL, a great penalty killer, and think, hey, let's pick this guy. Maybe we can convince him and give him a lot of money to, to come play a couple of years here with us. Isn't he a UFA? He is a UFA, yes. That's why I said he'll be the only UFA that they uh, voluntarily pick, I feel like, out of this entire draft. Mm. I mean, I would rather I would rather go and take, you know, an Adam Earn, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if uh, if they'd be willing to take that that UFA or you potentially a Christian Juice. Do you think that the Wings are going to protect him or Troy, Troy Stetcher? So I had the Detroit Red Wings on defense protecting Troy Stetcher, Cholosky, and Philip Ronick, and they're going to leave uh, uh, you know Christian Juice exposed, which you know I did did consider. I, I do think he could be a potential. Uh, pick for them, but on the forward group, I have them protecting Dylan Larkin, Bertuzzi, Verana, Fabri, Nefes- or Nemestikov, uh, Adam Ernie, and Michael Rasmussen. Okay. And okay. honestly, yep. there's yep. there's not much for them to pick as far as you know uh, players go. It's either Christian Juice or you know maybe a UFA from Detroit. So. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm taking Christian Juice if I'm Seattle because I know you know yeah he's a, he's a fifth defenseman. I think that's about where he slots, uh, but. You need those guys. You need somebody who can slot into your bottom pairing. And uh, you don't want to have him in your top four, but if you had injuries, he's not the worst guy to, to have to move up in the lineup. And he's cheap, cost-controlled. He's, he has a couple of years left before he's a UFA, After you know, depending on how long the deal is that he signs. Uh, I think that I'm going Christian Juice. Okay, yeah, I don't hate it because that was pretty much my my 1A, 1B choice there, so love it. Okay, the Edmonton Oilers. uh, Who do you have going from the oil? Yeah, I think if they can swing it, I think they're going to try to uh, trade James Neal here to clear some cap space. Hmm. Uh, Obviously, I think the option for them will be to uh, buy James Neal out if for some reason he doesn't get taken or they can't convince Seattle to take him for, you know, not too much, but... Uh, you know, we've seen what Kenny Holland's willing to deal to to bring in players. And, uh, you know, obviously, I think they, they could potentially move a, a future pick out. But, uh, you know, if they could clear that $5 million in cap space, 5.75, that would go a long way in helping them get, you know, Adam Larson re-signed and trying to find themselves a top six winger, which I keep hearing Zach Hyman's name attached to. But uh, we'll see how that goes. 
Yeah, you know, I I think you know when okay. So for the Oilers, now uh, obviously Duncan Keith is protected, uh, Darnell Nurse, Oscar Kleffbaum, and I'm on the fence about Ethan Bear. Well, let me just point this out. I think uh, Kleffbaum. He's it's it's come out that he's not likely going to play next season because of the injury, and I, I believe because he's injured, mm. he won't have to be protected. So, uh, correct. Um, I mean, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. So, I think that helps Ethan Bear's case because he'll get yep. yeah, protected then, at that then point. He's and, certainly protected. Um, yeah, and then you know, are you? I guess that that really does leave. I mean, you could go after uh, you know a Kyle Turris, perhaps. Uh, you know, if you maybe want some speed and a guy who had, you know, flashes at one point or a Josh Archibald, but really there's not a whole lot else on this team as far as, uh, yeah. Cause, you know, cause you're for sure. I guess at, at that point, yeah, you're, you're going to protect, uh, uh, you're going to protect everybody else that's, that's sitting there. If you're only protecting three defensemen, um, then you can protect seven of your forwards, uh, I guess if you now, know if if they left like a Devin Shore out there, Devin Shore is not a bad cheap option for your fourth line if you're building the fourth line here. Uh, the there's only one other like you're gonna obviously expose James Neal, uh, and and maybe you say you know we like Josh Archibald we're gonna keep him around. Uh, I'm wondering if there's a there's a world that exists where the Oilers go. Uh, Zach Cassian a little pricey. If we can't get rid of James Neal, maybe we can ditch on on Cassian. Like, is yeah. Cassian really bringing you the value at three point two million? Uh, I know, I know that he kind of brings those intangibles. I mean, this past year he only played twenty seven games. He only had five points. So even in an, in a full season, if he played all year long, you're looking at a a six goal fifteen point season. He did not have a good year. <laughs> and <laughs> and frankly, I mean, the only reason why he had had good years in the past is because of who he got to play for or play with, excuse me. Sure. Uh, I think maybe they leave Cassian exposed. And okay. uh, and Seattle might look at him and go, hey, there's a, there's a player who, especially after what Tampa Bay shows you need on a third line, maybe they're willing to bite and take away that salary and then they buy out James Neal with the rest. And uh, and that's a possibility for the Edmonton Oilers as well. So that's I, I had a hard time with the Oilers as, as to who they would end up taking. Uh, I know that I've I've seen Josh Archibald on some and uh, Tyler Benson, but I think if they can if they can sneak somebody who has proven that he can play with like protect guys, I think that that maybe would be something they'd be willing to go after and he'd fight a little bit you know you're there is an entertainment portion uh you don't know if your team's going to make the playoffs if you're seattle so you do kind of need those guys who can throw their body around and, and entertain as well and cassian definitely does that so we'll we'll see who they they in the end decide to leave exposed but i could see cassian being an interesting piece if they chose not to expose him i don't sure. know how mcdavid would feel about it or dry side. <laughs> They might be upset. Okay, let's let's go Florida Panthers. Yeah, this is another team. Uh, I, I had a real difficulty, you know, deciding who to, uh, you know, who to who to protect here and who not to protect. At least when it when it came to the forward group, right? I mean, I think obviously, you know, you've got to protect Keith Yandel, Aaron Ekblad, Mackenzie Weger, but you know, outside of that, uh, you know, the defense, I'm not really excited about any of those picks. But when I look at this this group here for you know the forward group for the florida panthers um really it, it came down to two names for me and i think you know honestly it's it's either nola achari or anthony duclair right um to me i, I got stuck between those two guys which one am i protecting which one am i leaving exposed um you know to me i think anthony duclair is the better choice to protect and so nola achari for me is a guy who has shown flashes before that he can be a decent middle six guy uh, particularly on the third line, I think is where he does the most damage. But, uh, you know, obviously with a guy like Duclair who just who ripped it up last year for Florida, you got to protect him uh, as your last basically protection slot out of all their four groups. And, yeah, so that leaves Achari exposed for me. Yeah, Achari's not a bad pick. I mean, Carter Verhage even would be, a, if you're, 
I'm assuming you're that they're going to have to leave him unprotected unless they're there, there's just too many defensemen. I have four defensemen protected for the Panthers. Do you? Who's your who's Ekblad, your fourth? Yandel, Mackenzie Weger, and Nudivar. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah, that's, that's a hard. You, I mean, it's a hard balance. You know, you, at the same time, when you're the Panthers, you know, you look down the rest of the organization, and, and do you really want to lose one of those defensemen? I mean, can you bring back Brandon Montour? Sure, but there's no guarantees. A UFA, I guess, if you know internally you're going to bring him back, you're less concerned about Nudivara, and you can leave him exposed. Um, but yeah, it's it's tough. It's I mean, there's there's going to be some decisions that have to be made, and obviously, it's tougher for me as you know, I, I guess a, a guy doing a mock draft to to go four and four or protect more defensemen than just the three. So, oh, would you um, be willing really? to? I mean, Patrick Hornquist might be exposed there. Yeah, you know. that, that could be a potential fit, but I just think, you know, at a salary in his age, I think he's just better off staying where he is, and I think Florida really likes what he brings to the table. Um, the one interesting piece, though, that I really like, uh, that I've seen in a couple expansion drafts that I think could could be a curveball, could be a UFA Chris that, yeah, Chris Traeger, uh, you know, maybe they bring him out wine and dine him for, you know, a couple weeks there before free agency and see if they can't get him to sign on long term because, you know, maybe they, you know, even though I have a couple other goaltenders, on my list that I think could be potential number ones for Seattle. Maybe they feel like this is the guy that's going to be there longer than, you know, these other goaltenders that I've selected. So they maybe think, okay, let's just take our shot. Now why we, we get an opportunity before he hits the market. Here's one other, one other uh, thought. The Florida Panthers tell Keith Yandel, we would like you to waive your no move clause. And the, he says, sure, I'll move my no wave clause because my no move clause, because, I'm clearly not wanted here and Seattle I'm sure would love to have him. And yes, he has two yeah. years left on his deal. He is 34 years old, but I think that you could, you could find if, you know, if things weren't working out and you needed to deal him, I think you could even deal him at the deadline with that one extra year uh, and you could get creative and, and flip him for a first. If, if he has even a halfway decent year where he's got 45, 40 points at the at the deadline or 30 points at the deadline, somebody would give you a first-round pick for Keith Yandel because he could come into your top four and and do some damage. on Even even if he's only on the second power play unit, he could make that second power play unit much more dangerous. I, I think that that's the one wild card that could happen is if Florida's willing to do that. Now, does Florida say, well, we are going to deal him but we aren't willing to just lose him for nothing. And that, that could be the other portion of that. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, I do think again, he still has a lot of offensive abilities and he still has wheels to burn. So for me, I think if, if I'm Florida, I'm holding on to him and then I'm trying to deal him before the draft, to try to move him. Because again, I'm sure, you know, Florida thinks that they can probably still get something good. Even if it's a second or third round pick, I still think, you know, that's worth holding on to. But I mean, if, okay, yes, if you could get a third round pick for him, that's fair. But I think you could also get a third, like, would you rather lose him or someone else? Um, is it worth that potential of flipping him later, especially because he has a no move clause, you know, he's not going to make it easy on you to move him either. So, uh, (laughs) And if Taylor Hall only went for a third round pick, then who knows what Yandel will go for? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's keep on cruising. The Los Angeles Kings. What okay. are you going from the Kings? Yeah, I've got a RFA winger leaving, and that's Austin Wagner. I think uh, you know. I, I think looking at Seattle's forward group here, I think there is a potential that Dustin Brown is left unexposed. I mean, in my my uh, mock, you know, draft here, I left him exposed for Seattle to potentially take. But I think obviously for me, I like Austin Wagner. I think he's got a lot of grit to his game. A young guy still, uh, still signed to a contract and it's, you know, he'll be an RFA soon. So, uh, you know, for me, he's the pick right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I was leaning there. Um, that's, you know, that, that's, that is a likely pick. I, I don't hate the idea of Dustin Brown going there. Um, uh, if he's exposed, depending on the other salary salaried players that they bring in, uh, I could see Dustin Brown going. I mean, he can he could still he could still do things. <laughs> like, and if you have you know, I I talked about the Anaheim Ducks taking Adam Henrique. 
And if they have Adam Henrique and Dustin Brown, you know, scattered throughout your lineup, You've got some. You've got some good players who can who can play defensively, who can s- score some goals, and will absolutely bring you that leadership and heart. And that may, you know, maybe that's this team is probably not going to be lacking that because of the players that will be available. And uh, I, that's one scenario that I could see happening is is Dustin Brown is ultimately the player chosen because I think he will be exposed. I mean, LA would be crazy to, to protect him. There's no reason to protect him. Yeah. I think the only reason they do is if Anze Kopitar steps in and says, Hey, I want to, you know, I want him protected. But I mean, if you're, uh, if even you're then Seattle, I don't think that I don't matters. think I would take him, but yeah, I agree. I think with this Ford group now, the one wild card I could see as far as uh, players being taken, I, I could see LA trying to make a deal to move Jonathan quick here because, sure. uh, you know, we've mentioned Fleury's name a couple times and this is a guy with a, a, you know, Stanley Cup pedigree, Vesna Trophy. So maybe, you know, moving, he rejuvenates his career. And I mean, I, I highly doubt it. I think quick the way he's played, I think he's probably on the downturn. But, you know, who knows? You know, maybe he, he gets a little shot in the arm and, and still shows up a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's keep on rolling to the Minnesota Wild. All right. So the team I'd... with, the, with that obviously just bought out <laughs> Parise and Ryan Suter. Yeah, Pretty so crazy. think they're lucky stars because I, in my first, when I first put this together, I had them getting Matt Dumba for free or potentially Minnesota, basically giving them a first rounder, you know, and saying, please don't take him kind of scenario. But now this opens up a world of possibilities, uh, you know, for Seattle as far as, uh, you know, players to take. And I think for me, if I'm Seattle, I'm taking Cam Talbot right now. I think uh-huh. he's at a very team friendly deal as far as price. You think they'll protect uh, looked- Capo Kakinen, yeah. Yeah, I do, and I I think he still still can play. And if you get him in a one A one B scenario, obviously I think Talbot is probably your one B. Um, you know, he would I think still succeed in that that team. And I think honestly, where Minnesota is going, uh, you know, they would welcome you know maybe getting that extra bit of cap space, especially because Cap Okakinen is going to have to get a new deal after the season, and uh, you know he's going to be their future in that. Okay, uh, yeah. They, you know, once once that move happened, it made them a whole lot less exciting in here, didn't it? <laughs> right. um, I could see a sauce like Carson Sousey going. Uh, you know, you get that again. Those those like bottom pairing defensemen, uh, they can always give you picks later on. I don't know if Cam Talbot has it. He's thirty four years old. Plus, he has an extra year left on his deal. I don't think that they'll want that salary. Uh, so I, the other one, other guy I could see them them going for, uh, depending on who they end up protecting. You know, if if they protect Ryan Hartman or Nick Bukestad, I could I could see them taking one or the other. I think based on what I who I have protected, uh, only one of those players could be protected. And so uh, maybe it's probably Hartman, and they'll leave Bukestad. And he's a UFA at the end of the year, but Bukestad, you know, he could, again, just like everybody else, he could probably fetch you a third or fourth round pick. Um, yeah, and he plays that, center. He could play, you know, somewhere in your top nine. Yeah, and they, they re-signed him to a one-year extension just to leave him exposed, right? So that was the whole idea behind that. And, yep. um, yeah, I think if they don't go after a guy like Cam Talbot, for me, the, the choice is Nick Bukestad. Okay. Uh, let's keep her going to the Montreal Canadiens, the uh, – runner up for the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I've got the goaltending theme on point here and this is my potential starter for Seattle and that's Jake Allen. I yeah. think he's the guy that's going to walk into Seattle and take the reins and I think Cam Talbot would be a a, a great one B compliment to Jake Allen who will get the opportunity to start in Seattle. I I mean I agree. Yeah, obviously he's exposed. There there is no other choice but to expose him. Uh the the tough thing for Montreal is you know obviously you've, you've got kind of your players that you ha- all, you have to protect and Jake Evans was really good you know Jake Evans could be exposed he's in our, he's he still has another year left on his deal he's getting seven hundred fifty thousand and he played fantastic for the Canadians in the playoffs. Uh, Brent Kulak will probably be out there, and so will Ben Ch- Ben Chariot. So, and the other the other thing is, what if what if Jonathan Drouin's exposed? Now, I did think about that because, like 
there's one name out there that I left exposed, and that was Paul Byron. Paul I Byron, think yeah. the leadership and they, the. I mean, the he played so well room. in the playoffs. He did. So you know, maybe maybe Montreal looks at this and says, "Hey, look how good we played without Jonathan Drouin." He's had some, you know, off ice issues. You know, he just hasn't really worked out or fit in our lineup. You know, maybe this is our opportunity to just, you know, cut loose, right, and just say, okay, thanks, but see you later. Because if I'm Seattle and Jonathan Druin's out there, I'm taking him. Yeah, Absolutely. and see, the, and and that is the thing, though. If you leave Paul Byron exposed, you you can't not protect Druin. I don't think. I, right. Paul Byron gets exposed. They probably don't take him because he's. 3.4 million. He doesn't bring you a whole lot of offense. He's not an exciting player. Uh, you're probably more leaning towards if you don't take Jake Allen, you're probably going to take Chariot or Kulak. Yeah, but I might I, even go Jake Evans at that point. But, but I have still. heard, I have heard that Montreal wants to protect their top four. So interesting. That's the other. I don't see how they do it. And if, well, if they do, then they're leaving exposed. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I think if that's their pick. Yeah. I, I don't mind that either. If he's exposed, he'll probably go like you're will. you know, he didn't have the best year with devils last year, but you're willing to take the chance on him because you know that, I mean, when he was played, played with the right players, he could score 20 goals. No problem. Right. Uh, okay. The New York Islanders. Who do you have Cohen from the Island? Yeah, I'm staying uh, with the Ford group, and uh, I've got um, – oh, sorry. Um, I've got a Matt Martin getting taken. Oh, Matt Martin. Okay. You're yeah, going the... a little bit of a curveball. I just – I really like his fourth-line game that he brings, and he always seems to just be in the, the thick of things when it comes to – you know, when you look at Barry Trotz's type of, of game that he loves to play right, he's the type of guy that I think that a lot of um, – a lot of guys respect as far as a leader, but you know he's going to bring you a lot of sandpaper, a lot of grit on that fourth line, uh, chipping some good penalty kill mil- minutes. And I think for one point five million dollars, it's worth taking him. I mean, y- you know, if anything, you can you can probably deal him again if it if it doesn't really work out or fit your game. And uh, you know, I think there's a lot of teams that'd be willing to take him for one point five million. Okay, uh, I could see Cal Clutterbuck going. You know, you, if you're looking for that energy plug. Uh, Cal Clutterbuck would be a, a great player to bring in. Uh, and then, poten- you know, do you think that they're, uh, you know, on the defensive side, Nick Letty, Ryan Pollock, uh, Adam Pellich, Scott Mayfield, like this is one of those guys is getting exposed. Yeah, I think Scott Mayfield, probably the one guy exposed, but I think, um, you know, I don't know. I think, I think, Seattle's going to have a good pick of some top, you know, some top six defensemen. And especially, I think they're going to have a lot of third pairing guys uh, that they're going to pick. So, um, yes, you know, hey, there's going to be, you know, a lot of teams that will be willing to make a move and make a deal to, to get a guy like Scott Mayfield, you know, even if you want to move him before the draft or at the deadline. Uh, but to me, I think Matt Martin's leadership and his grit that he brings on that fourth line, I think, is uh, something that a team like Seattle could really use. Okay. Yeah, I I'd, I'd say uh I would rather have Cal Clutterbuck or even Leo Komarov over those guys. Komarov was playing in the top line here and there because of what sure. he was able to bring and so maybe you know, I, I think I'd rather have them than Matt Martin. I don't see Matt Martin going uh just because he's he's got too many years left on his deal and he's not all that effective, but but if you want somebody who can fight, you might go Matt Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let's go to the New York Rangers. They've got four players who are auto protected. Uh, who do you have going from the Rangers? Yeah, from the Rangers, obviously, right? We we talked about those protected players, the four group. We've got Panera and Kreider, Zabinajad protected. Then I've got them protecting Ryan Strom, Buchnevich, Philip Scheidel, and Brett Howden. So for me, it's just leaving a couple guys exposed, and I think they they ultimately take Colin Blackwell. I I don't think there's a lot on this team as far as uh, players that excite me on you know either the defensive or offensive side. So to me, Colin Blackwell is the obvious pick. It's just a you know a centerman signed to a a minimum deal that I think you know again you can you can flip at the deadline. You can flip at any point. Teams will always welcome depth at the center position. Yeah, uh, I think the one guy that could go would be Brett Howden if they're willing to expose him. Uh, he'd be the other the one other guy that I I could see them taking depending on who the Rangers want to protect on their back end. 
They want to protect sure. Ryan Lindgren. Uh, they're going to have to, you know, leave certain players exposed. So that, that's just uh, they're they're up against it. They won't lose. I mean, Brett Howden. He's he's so far down the lineup too uh, that I could see them kind of working it out. Like, hey, take Brett Howden for us. We'll give you a fourth round pick. Take Brett Howden and. Uh, give him the fresh start they need. And, and he's not really doing anything for the Rangers at this point. So I could see him, you know, he, and he was a first round pick and had a lot of potential coming out and uh, maybe a change of scenery would be good for him too. Okay. Uh, let's go Ottawa, Ottawa senators. Yeah. I have a goaltender getting picked here. Um, but can you guess Swiss one? That's the question. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me who they expose. I think they'll leave Matt Murray open to be taken. You think so? Oh, yeah. Okay. I ultimately think that they play the fools and they protect Matt Murray because I think towards the end of the year, he showed some signs of his former self and looked pretty decent, as did this team in general. And so I think they they keep him, you know, tied down to this team for a few more years and leave Philip Gustafson exposed. And I think that's who, you know, um, Seattle ultimately takes so they can get, you know, that number three guy in their organization. Okay. I, I think the one other player that will likely be exposed, Chris Tierney, uh, he'd be a great pickup. And sure. uh, and again, another center. Like I know I keep, I keep going after the centers, but uh, he'd be a fantastic player to have because he really, he can play, if you need him to go and play all the way up your lineup, he can really play up and down anywhere. And he, he'll, all, you know, he'll score you goals. Uh, he's got some speed. I think Chris Tierney would, it, if he's exposed, will be the one taken from Ottawa. Okay. All right, Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, Flyers. This one was actually, I really enjoyed this pick, and I think it's going to work out better than most people expect for me. I've got a centerman in the name of Nolan Patrick going to Seattle. Um, ultimately, we talked about it, right? Jakob Voracek's going to be left exposed in the expansion draft. I think ultimately they will pass on him, although what I will say is he would be a nice, you know, superstar type guy, a, a guy who had it once before. He still, I think he could still produce and still give. Hey, what I will say is um, Kenny Holland, go ahead, sign Ryan Suter, Zach Parise, like you were planning to do, I don't know how many years ago in Detroit. Yes. So. Go ahead, bring him on board now. One year, one mil. There you go. One year, one mil. That would be fun. I mean, those those two guys are going to be the wild cards because Ryan Suter can still play. Oh, absolutely, he can still play. You put him in a top four role, he can still give you twenty two minutes. Parise a night, no can. problem. Parise, I no, mean, Parise would be he would be a great you know third line guy to have you know chip in every now and again. And well, well, uh, do do him like Corey Perry. I mean, I think Montreal did. Yeah. Montreal with Corey Perry. They did exactly what I think people have been like. Why do teams feel the need to play players every night? And I think that the Leafs will do the same thing if Joe Thornton comes back. Uh, that, sure, you know you're you you can't play those guys every night. And if he can give you 50 games in the regular season in an 82 game season, and then play all playoffs, like just you want them for the playoffs. That's all you care about. You're getting to the playoffs. So uh, I, I think that if they you know, if they can can kind of work that then Parise plays 50 games and you keep him healthy and come playoff time, he'll probably score you a big goal. Yep. All right, Justin, just over an hour. Beautiful. We're through. All right. Well, I will, I'll let you go. We will talk to you guys soon. Find us on Twitter at OT hockey talk. Looking forward to the expansion draft. Let us know if you agree, disagree, um, slash love all the picks that I make and hated all the picks that Justin made. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, And we'll be looking forward to all the craziness coming up soon. Talk to you soon.